As crossovers continue to gain popularity here in the States, auto manufacturers rush to develop their own versions in order to steal a piece of that pie. Volkswagen has been in dire need of a vehicle like this for years, which is why this week I'm testing out the very large American-built 2018 Volkswagen Atlas. If you look at the model line of any manufacturer, you'll notice that their crossovers and SUVs have typically been the best sellers in the lineup. That actually wasn't the case with Volkswagen just a couple years ago, where the Jetta and Golf has always been the company's best sellers. However, with the introduction of the all new Atlas, Volkswagen is hoping this will eventually become one of the segments or one of the brand's top sellers. And it's actually paid off. Since going on sale since May of this year, Volkswagen has moved all over 21,000 units and last month Month alone in November, they moved about 5,100 units, which makes this the third best selling vehicle in the Volkswagen lineup, just behind the Jetta and the new Tiguan. Uh, the Golf actually uh, only sold about 4,200 units uh, for the month of November. So what makes the Atlas so good in the American market? Well, this is a vehicle designed specifically for the American taste. It's built at their uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee plant next to the Volkswagen Passat. And this is the largest vehicle Volkswagen has ever produced. It's actually built on the same MQB platform as the Golf, if you can believe it. Volkswagen has stretched it to the max. Uh, and in terms of the design, it has a lot of the new corporate design language that we've seen on all other, other Volkswagen products. A very blocky, somewhat conservative, somewhat handsome and a little bit controversial in its design, especially when you look at the front. Now, one thing about the Atlas that I love, full LED headlights are standard on every trim level. Now, that um, makes it one of the only vehicles in the segment that actually offers it. Vehicles like the Honda Pilot make you pay extra for it. The Toyota Highlander doesn't even offer LED headlights as an option. Now, uh, the Atlas has a very bold, American, brash, in-your-face look with the design. The chrome grille is very prominent. Uh, I'm not particularly in love with this, the design of the front, I think it looks better from the rear, but I do like some of the elements here. You do have fog lights. You do have a very, you know, traditional blocky kind of aggressive look to the design. Um, now, when you look at the wheel sizes, my tester being an SEL Premium, these are the 20 inch wheels that are standard on the SEL Premium. You can also go for a black finished 20 inch wheel if you guys want. The lower trims of the Atlas, which by the way, they offer it in five trims, will come with a smaller 18 inch wheel design. Now. Looking at the proportions of the Atlas, this is a big vehicle. It's much larger than the company's second largest vehicle, the Touareg, which was just discontinued for 2018. Its wheelbase is about 117 inches long. Its overall length is about 198 inches long. This is about four to six inches longer than your neighbor's Pilot and Highlander and it's also a couple inches wider. And the wheelbase is significantly larger, about six inches longer than the current generation Honda Pilot, which gives this vehicle a lot more space. Now at the rear, I think this is probably the most handsome proportion of the Atlas. It has a very Audi-like design to it. I like the LED taillights that are included on this SEL Premium and then the dual exhaust tips. Now my tester, um, being the top of the line, it comes with four motion all-wheel drive. It comes with the company's VR6 3.6 liter engine. There's also a two liter turbo, which I actually haven't driven yet. But enough about the exterior. Let's take a look at the inside since that's the important element of a vehicle in this segment and see how Volkswagen has done. So when you first approach the Atlas, this is unlike any other Volkswagen product you've honestly seen here in the States. It's just a huge vehicle and that's immediately noticeable as you walk up to the vehicle. Now, looking at the key fob, it's the current Volkswagen key. It doesn't actually have the switchblade anymore. Uh, it's the smart key access system with push button start. It also gives you a remote start. To activate it, just push the lock button, push and hold this button here twice, and the engine will start right up for you. If you want to deactivate it, just push and hold that button again, and that will turn the remote start off. Now, when you approach the Atlas, you can see here, it's got a little ridge on the door handle here. This is to lock the door. Just touch it. When the key is on you, it'll lock the doors. The mirror is also electrically full to unlock it. There's a sensor on the back. Just 
put your hand on the back of the handle and it unlocks the door for you. Now looking at the inside of this 2018 Atlas, you can see my tester has the Shetland interior. This is the actual real leather. It's not the VTEX leatherette that you get on the other trims. The SEL Premium is the only one that gives you the real cowhide. And the interior is very handsomely appointed. It's very Volkswagen restrained. And it actually does take a little bit of technology from Audi, which is nice to, to see in this vehicle. Now getting in, it has the perfect step in height. Uh, it doesn't actually even need any running boards. It has about eight inches of ground clearance. So a lot of people are gonna get into this and like the view you get. Now shutting the door, it sounds solid. This is the MQB platform that we love in the current generation Mark 7 Golf. Now starting the vehicle up, the push to start button is actually uh, placed right here by the shifter. Just put your foot on the brake, push this button here to fire up the engine. Now my tester being the top of the line does have the Volkswagen digital cockpit display, which is very similar to Audi's virtual cockpit. And the engine, it's the company's 3.6 VR6 motor. It's a nice sounding engine. It's a naturally aspirated engine. Uh, it's interesting that Volkswagen decided to go with this as the top engine where some competitors are doing a turbo four. Now looking at the rest of the interior, you can see um, being the top of the line, it has some nice materials. I like the faux stitching that's on the upper part of the dash. It is soft touch. You have some silver painted plastic. You have this wood grain accented trim, which is obviously fake, but it looks decent. Um, looking at the door panels here, you can see the same soft touch materials from the dashboard. You you have more of the silver painted uh, plastic and the wood. Um, you have the aluminum door handle, this, this model having the upgraded Fender audio system. It's nice and padded right here where your elbows will rest. The windows are one touch automatic for all four, which is definitely nice. I expected that for sure. The windows, uh, the mirrors also are electrically folding if you guys want that. Your light controls are down there. And then the steering wheel. This is the same steering wheel that we see in the Mark 7 Golf. It's a flat bottom design, no paddles on the wheel. Kind of glad about that. This is a family SUV. Uh, and it's just, you know, a really nice, smooth electric power steering assist. I think a lot of buyers are going to get into this and, you know, kind of feel very familiar. It's a high quality cabin, I especially love the digital cockpit display. Now this, coming over here to the head unit, this is the 8 inch Discover Media touchscreen head unit. It's the updated system I've shown you in the Golf before. You can see it's like an all glass screen here, which looks very clean. I like the fact that there's a volume and a tuning knob. All your buttons here are touch sensitive on the outside. Uh, and overall, it works pretty well. Uh, when you go to the app display here, um, it has uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. That is standard across the board. Um, when you guys uh, go for any of the trims, let me plug my phone in really quick here and have it connect to there so I can show you the Apple CarPlay. And you can see there is the Apple CarPlay. It has a very nice response to the uh, touch response, which is good. And again, this is kind of what's expected in today's market. Um, coming back over here, you can see there's all your different sources. Or when you go to the menu options, you can see all your different sources, radio, media, telephone. Um, and again, I've, I like the touch response. The navigation function here, uh, also is the typical Volkswagen head unit. It works kind of like a tablet. You can scroll, you can pinch, you can zoom. It's very fast. So Volkswagen is doing a really good job with the head unit. And if you want, because I have the digital cockpit, when you push this button here, and then you push this button here, and you kind of cycle over to the navigation display, it'll put the navigation display right there, just like Audi's virtual cockpit, minus the Google Earth um, look, which again, uh, they have to save stuff for Audi, but it's really nice. You can control the digital cockpit display from this button here, and you can change all your different views. I typically had it on vehicle or on driving data, as opposed to the navigation function where it'll show you this and then you can change you know, what you want it to sh show here if you want to put economy, average economy, range, stuff like that. I typically had it on this setting where it was just showing the speedometer, um, but again, you can customize this to your liking. That's part of the digital cockpit display. Now, when you put the vehicle into reverse, you can see my tester being the SEL Premium has a full 360 camera, uh, which is one of the best resolutions in the business. Honestly, for mainstream brands, this kind of rivals what the luxury brands are doing. I really love this, this head unit here with the 360 views. It has front and rear parking sensors, and it'll also parallel park itself if you guys want. It has rear cross traffic alerts. So all the safety features you expect are basically included in this top of the line version. Um, down here you can see you have your tri-zone automatic climate control. You have heated and cooled seats. You have a heated steering wheel. Uh, you have an automatic start stop button here to turn off the that feature. Down here there is no um, wireless charging I believe. 
Uh, however, you do have a Wi-Fi hotspot, you do have a USB, a power outlet, and an aux port. Um, a nice place to put your phone down there. Um, this controls the 8-speed automatic transmission. I believe it's an ASIN design transmission because it's built in Japan. The parts come from Japan. It's a good transmission. It has a sport mode here. You can also access the modes from this button here. When you push there, you can go to a custom, normal, eco, um, and then um, the sport mode, which I prefer leaving it in the sport mode. We'll go into the test drive later. Pushing this button here will basically turn on the 360 camera. If you guys are going below 10 miles an hour to help you in those parking situations, this turns on the automatic parallel parking motion and then you have an automatic electronic parking brake there uh, which is definitely nice like the cup holders here the center console here is nice and big it's, it's nice and soft it's got good storage in there it's got a USB port in there as well it's a nice deep storage and it's nice and padded now looking at the glove compartment here it's also damped. It's not lined with felt. Uh, you can see your SD card slot is there for the navigation, but it's a decent size. Now my tester, uh, being this top of the line, also has a panoramic sunroof, which is actually available on the lower trims if you guys go for like a tech package on the SE. It's huge. It's one of the largest ones in the business. Uh, love the fact that Volkswagen's offering that. You have a nice woven material on the headliner and the seats also. Um, they're pretty comfortable. They don't really hold you in place. They're not aggressively bolstered, but I imagine they're going to be great on long trips. And I like the fact that they're really leather as opposed to the faux leather, although Volkswagen does a pretty good job with their simula simulated VTEX leather red. But overall, the interior of this car is not the most luxurious like the Mazda CX-9. However, it does have good technology. It has a good head unit. It has great, um, great looks in the instrument panel. Uh, and it's also roomy and spacious and it gives you a nice view of the road. So I think Volkswagen kind of nailed it there in terms of what the American buyers are looking for uh, in this larger crossover segment. Looking at the second row of the Atlas, you can see the seats offer plenty of space and they also adjust, they slide forward and back to give you a little bit more space. The seat back itself also kind of will recline. If you pull this lever here, um, you can recline the seat back back. And to get to the third row is pretty easy. My tester being the top of the line model has these manual retracting sunshades, uh, which is definitely nice to have. Now stepping back here, you can see really nice, easy step in height, just like the front seats. So when you shut the door, they also sound nice and solid. You kind of give it to them with their MQB platform. Now, um, because the Atlas is so wide, you can see you can easily fit three across here. You can also replace this bench here with captain's chairs if you guys want to do that, although that does lower your seating capacity to six versus seven. This vehicle maxes out at seven passengers. Uh, some competitors do offer eight. I'm surprised they don't do that. Now uh, you can see here, rear seat passengers get their own set of climate controls. You have heated rear seats, three level, which is nice, it's the norm. You have two USB ports down here and then you have a power outlet down here if you guys want to actually charge your 115 volt um, to power your electronics. You have two map pockets here, some vents, and then the materials. It is hard touch plastic on this upper portion, I like the front. There's aluminum for the door handles here, but it is nice and soft padded uh, where your elbows would rest on the armrest. Now because the Atlas is so big, Volkswagen is um, bragging about the fact that you can actually put full-size adults in the third row, so let's find out if that's the case. Now to access the third row, it's not quite as easy as the Pilot, but you just pull this lever here, and the seat itself kind of flips forward and then slides forward. And actually it gives you a pretty large opening uh, to get to the third row. So that's a really good impression. Now getting back here, I am pretty short at 5'7", um, but let's put the seat back. Now to put the seat back, it's kind of annoying because you think you just grab this and it'll come back. You actually have to pull the lever again. That'll make the seat back recline. And then this is kind of where you can have the seat adjusted slightly. Um, to give you a little bit more rear seat space. This is with the seat all the way back, which would definitely be a little bit tight, although I could probably deal with this on a longer trip, so this isn't terrible. Um, my knees do hit the, da or the seat back uh, when the seat is moved back, but again, you can move the seat forward to give passengers a little bit more space. And the space back here is actually really good. I'm pretty shocked actually, like there is, because the vehicle is so wide, you could easily put two across here. I'm surprised they didn't allow for a third passenger in the third row to expand seating capacity to eight, but materials are hard touch plastic here. You have a nice view because of that pano sunroof, but I mean, overall with vents back here, I could sit back here on a longer trip, no problem, especially when the seat moves forward a little bit. So Volkswagen, you did a really great job with uh, making the third row in this vehicle actually usable for adults. Now, most of the upper trims will come with a power tailgate, which is definitely expected in this class. It also has the hands-free function, which again is expected. Now, because this vehicle is much larger than the competition, you're looking at more cargo space as well. With all the seats up, you're looking at around 21 cubic feet of space. Now, if you want to fold down the second row, Volkswagen makes it pretty easy. First of all, the headrest needs to be lowered. 
and I had these up because I was sitting back here. Um, and they're just lowered by pushing a little button here and then push it down. And the seats, they're not electrically folding. You just kind of pull here on this little lever and then push the seat forward and then it folds down nice and flat. When you fold down the second row, you get around 55 cubic feet of space. And then if you fold down the, th the uh, second row, I'm sorry, when you fold down the third row, you get 55. Fold down all this, the rows, you get around 98 cubic feet of space, which is about 15 more cubic feet of space than what you get in a Honda Pilot or a Toyota Highlander. This is making it one of the largest in the segment. Only the, the huge Chevrolet Traverse gives you a little bit more space. But again, Volkswagen made sure they designed this for the American families, and it definitely shows with how much space you get in the third row and the cargo area. Now, underneath the floor here, uh, you do have a temporary spare tire underneath there, in addition to the sub for your Fender audio system and a little bit of storage. So Volkswagen, you did a really good job with uh, packaging this vehicle. It's definitely going to appeal to a lot of buyers. I can see why it's selling so well. the new Atlas, Volkswagen gives you a choice of two engines. This is the upgraded engine versus the 2.0-liter turbo 4. Uh, the company's 3.6-liter VR6 naturally aspirated gasoline V6. Um, this engine I've shown you in the Volkswagen Passat. Uh, in this application, it makes 276 horsepower and 266 pound-feet of torque, which is pretty class competitive. The Honda Pilot makes like four more horsepower. The new Highlander makes um, like another 20 horsepower versus this. Uh, it all goes out through an eight-speed automatic transmission that's the only transmission offered um, with the four motion all-wheel drive as an option front wheel drive is standard if you guys don't go for all-wheel drive now the Atlas is a pretty big vehicle and it shows it weighs around 4,500 pounds in this uh, configuration but uh, Volkswagen says you can tow up to 5,000 pounds so that's definitely class competitive in terms of the towing capabilities now fuel economy uh, it does lag behind the competition you're looking at around 17 in the city 23 on the highway if you guys go to the uh, front wheel drive model it goes up to 1825 the four cylinder turbo is only available with uh, front wheel drive that's rated the best at 2226 so vw you do have to work on the gas mileage but uh, let's get it out on the road and see how it all performs so I briefly drove the Atlas uh, in Texas earlier this year. Was Didn't get a chance to do a full review on the car, so I was really happy when Volkswagen dropped off this vehicle for a full week, uh, which allows me to really get a feel for the car in general. Now, as I remembered from before, the Atlas makes a really strong first impression. It's really roomy, it's really comfortable. Um, when you sit here at a light, the engine shuts off and it's honestly very, very barely noticeable. And then when you let off the brake, it restarts pretty seamlessly. Um, so it helps kind of, for those of you who don't like the start stop function, it works pretty well on the Atlas. But I mean, when you sit in the driver's seat, you have a nice high seating position. I get very comfortable in this car. Uh, I can reach the pedals well. You know, so it, it's, it kind of accommodates a wide range of shorter drivers and taller drivers. And Volkswagen kind of nailed the overall feel with this car with looking, or with what the American market is looking for. It's also a very smooth car when you first take off you know the fact that Volkswagen decided to use a six cylinder uh, it makes really nice smooth pleasant noises the transmission it's an eight-speed auto it goes about its business really well and the ride is also very soft Volkswagen has tuned this ride for for comfort as opposed to sportiness um, this is definitely not the traditional Volkswagen way which makes this car you know feel very American in its driving dynamics that may turn off a couple of you know German buyers who are the Volkswagen faithful buyers who prefer that feel uh, but you're really gonna like it if you guys are looking for the most comfort-oriented uh, SUV in the segment. Now, this is the VR6 motor, and this is a lot of weight that it's pushing around. So you can feel that the Atlas can f can feel a little underpowered at times, which can be a little disappointing um, considering this has you know 276 horsepower, but again, it weighs 4,500 pounds. The eight-speed auto is tuned for comfort as opposed to speed. Now, it will feel adequate most of the time. It's really where you kind of feel this car has a little bit light on torque. Um, you kind of have to bury your foot a little bit more than you would want, and the revs kind of have to build up above four grand, but it's a very smooth engine, so you're not gonna really be complaining too much about pushing the engine too hard. It just kind of make the gas mileage suffer when I have to floor it constantly to get up to highway speeds, but when you do get it up to those speeds, 
you know, it's nice and smooth, linear power band, so if you don't like those Turbo 4s and how lumpy their power delivery can be, this is where the Atlas is gonna kinda shine. Now, when you get it up to highway speeds here, uh, it's a very quiet vehicle. There's very little wind noise, very little road noise, very little engine noise. It's just a really great road trip car, and that super soft suspension translates to a very comfortable ride. I would easily take this on a long trip, no problem. You have great visibility, a nice, because of this is a boxy design, you have a great view out of the back, good view out of the front, big side mirrors, but of course, being a family car, it does come with Volkswagen's driver assistance tech. Uh, when you guys turn on the adaptive cruise function, you set it, um, you can basically change the follow distance here. I have it on the closest distance. It has active lane keep assist with steering assist, so it will try to keep you centered in the lane. It kind of works a little bit better than what I've experienced in the Toyota products, but not quite as, you know, evasive as some of the uh, Honda systems or the, you know, luxury brands and whatnot. But, you know, just driving this vehicle on the highway, you know, it's a really comfortable car. And, and with all this space, you can easily carry, you know, five, six, seven people in this car. Although I, with seven, I will say that it probably will feel a little taxed. Uh, this engine could use more low end torque, which is um, why you may want to go to the Audi, you know, Q7. Although these vehicles don't share a platform, the Q7 has that supercharged V6 that I showed you earlier this year, which just has a lot more pull uh, than this particular powertrain. It feels definitely light on low end torque. I haven't driven the four cylinder turbo, but I imagine that will feel even more sluggish, although because it's only front wheel drive, it does reduce the weight by 200 pounds. Uh, but I imagine most of you will probably end up going for the uh, six cylinder anyways. The eight speed automatic also is a very good transmission. When you floor the accelerator, it's very good at giving down or dropping down a gear. And again, it sounds nice. It's a nice sounding engine. It just takes a little bit of time. The zero to 60 time for this car, I believe is like 7.8 seconds, which makes it about a second to a second and a half slower than some of its competition, which can be disappointing. Uh, but again, you don't buy this type of vehicle uh, for drag racing. So test drive the Atlas, see if the power is enough for you. You may notice that it does feel a little bit sluggish compared to some competitors, but it's very smooth, it's very quiet. Uh, and fuel economy, I mentioned earlier, is kind of uh, lower than its competitors. In my week's worth of testing, uh, I've been averaging around 15 miles per gallon in mostly city. On the highway, I got it up to about 22 miles per gallon. So it's definitely thirstier than some of its competitors. I haven't driven the four cylinder, as I said earlier, but that could be the one that gets a little bit better gas mileage. VW should just needs to work on the gas mileage uh, for this car. It could be a little bit better, but I mean, overall, I'm pretty pleased with the way this drives. This is not the sportiest. It's kind of lost that German um, feel. And that could be disappointing if you guys are a Volkswagen enthusiast. Uh, although it does have the refinement, it just has kind of lost that sporting feel. I, I hold the Mazda CX-9 as the sportiest vehicle to drive. This kind of falls in between a Pilot and a Highlander. Uh, in terms of uh, driving dynamics, but it's not a bad vehicle to drive, of course, nonetheless. It's a really nice family car for about 90% of the American buyers. Now, what's it gonna cost to put an Atlas in your driveway? Well, this car starts at about $30,500. That's 20 grand less than Volkswagen's smaller Touareg, which is, why the, which is why the Touareg didn't sell very well. This starts right in line with all of its competitors. Now, that's for a four-cylinder a turbo with front wheel drive. Now, if you guys, if you guys want a V6, you have to add about 1400 bucks. It starts at around 31.9 for the V6. Now going to an SE model, that gives you features like blind spot monitoring, the upgraded head unit, um, the VTEX leatherette seats as opposed to the cloth, and you can option in the driver assistance and a sunroof. That model will start around $2,000 more than the um, S model. Um, that will come in around thirty-four, thirty-five thousand dollars uh, with the tech package, with the big sunroof, the driver assistance. You're going to spend around forty grand, which is pretty much the norm. Now, my tester being the SEL Premium is considerably more expensive, as I, as you guys should expect. Pretty much, um, this vehicle, uh, fully loaded, comes with everything. It's the only trim that you can get with the Volkswagen Digital Cockpit Display, the upgraded sound, the twenty-inch wheels. Uh, my tester start or is basically is fully loaded at forty-eight thousand five hundred dollars. 900 for destination, you're looking at around four, a tick over 49 grand. That makes it slightly more expensive than a Honda Pilot Elite, um, which is around 47, 48 thousand dollars. However, this is cheaper than the new Chevrolet Traverse, uh, which can easily top 50 thousand dollars fully loaded. Uh, a Mazda CX-9 is still one of the best values. That's around 45 thousand dollars for a signature trim. It's basically what you're going to be spending for a fully loaded version of these crossovers. So Volkswagen has kind of held the pricing right in line. And again, if you guys don't want the SEL Premium, you can go to like an SEL. That's around $42,000, and you're really just missing the, the, the digital cockpit display and the real leather. 
uh, and the upgraded sound and head unit as opposed to you know the um, what you get in the SCL Premium. But I think the Atlas is a great value. I think it's priced right. I think it has a lot of space. I think it's roomy. It's got a usable third row for adults. Um, and aside from the fuel economy, which is kind of down a couple MPG from its competitors, uh, it's a really great vehicle if you guys are looking for uh, a large three row crossover and you are tired of seeing all the pilots, all the explorers, all the Highlanders that are basically littering your local neighborhood roads. But anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2018 Volkswagen Atlas. If you're in the market for a large uh, crossover, family crossover, this one should definitely be at the top of your list. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video.